Okay, so allow me to share my screen. So this will be our slides for gases. This is the same slide that I made already available in Canva. So I just published it a few or an hour ago or a few hours ago. So you can access this as well with the videos that I have inserted already. So these are the learning outcomes. I place here the learning outcomes for this topic that way. When you review already for the exam or for the quiz, these are the things that you have to make sure you know how to do. So when you're done with this set of slides, you should be able to explain the law of diffusion, uh, which I'll be discussing later at the end of the slide. You have to know how to state it in words and state it in equation form and derive its formula as well. Again, uh, this has something to do, the next three, learning outcomes has something to do with the gas loss. So you should be able to calculate the volume if the pressure is changed or vice versa. Calculate the pressure if the volume is changed. Calculate the volume if temperature is changed or temperature if volume is changed. So the first one has something to do with uh, Charles Law. The second one has something to do with uh, Boyle's law. Now, this one, the temperature, <clears throat> oh, I love the word calculate here. Calculate temperature if the volume and pressure are changed and pressure if the volume and temperature are changed. So this one is already the combined gas law. Wherein, as discussed last meeting, it simply is PV over T, which is a constant, or shall we say it's the P1, V1 over T1, being equal to P2, V2 over T2 for this one. Then you should be able to calculate the molar mass of the gas given the mass, volume, temperature, and pressure. Uh, this has something to do now with the use of the ideal gas law. So from the ideal gas law, you'll be able to get the mass of one mole, okay, molar mass, or its unit is actually gram per mole. So we refer to that as the molecular mass of your gas. Of course, given the other uh, parameters, mass, volume, temperature, and pressure. Then also calculate the density of the gas at any stated temperature and pressure. So the density of the gas actually is also derived or can be derived from the ideal gas law. Okay, so these are the six learning outcomes that you are expected to be able to attain at the end of this set of slides or at the end of module three. Now, why in the first place, why is there a need for you to know about gases, their behavior, uh, even if actually you're not a CHE, even if you're in another course, it's really very important and it has great significance that you know about the behavior of gases. Uh, number one is that, of course, when we speak of air pollution, which is really one very big issue right now, actually it has been an issue ever since. Uh, I can uh, learn how to count because pollution has been, shall I say, in an increasing rate, especially air pollution in the past decades. So in here, we have to look into the behavior of a mixture of gases. And air is one thing that has, or is a mixture of these gases. And which of those component gases in the air are detrimental to our health, you need to know as well. So you can see here in table 5.1, the composition of one cubic meter sample of dry air taken at 25 degrees Celsius, a normal atmospheric pressure. So this is, these are the gases that makes up our or that make up our atmosphere, which has air. Okay, so nitrogen has the highest percent. Okay, now oxygen is the second highest. Now water vapor, which is simply water in the gas form, varies uh, in terms of its percentage from from place to place or day to day. So we know that in humid areas our humidity is high, water vapor content in air is also high. 
And there are areas also that are said to be not humid wherein water vapor content is low. So that is why it says here, uh, it varies from place to place or day to day. Uh, the reason why if you are in the Middle East, <clears throat> it's dry weather, <clears throat> excuse me class, it's dry weather, but you feel very sticky. It's because it has high uh, water content. The air has high water content if uh, you feel very sticky. So we say it's very humid. Uh, when we do computations later on, as you proceed in your journey as a chemical engineer, uh, when you compute uh, anything that concerns air, we always base it on dry air. <clears throat> we use it as our reference point. Okay, you will have varied problems later on that concerns dry air as such. It's very important that you will have the basics and the fundamentals of the behavior of air, which is a mixture of gases. So this is just to give you the reason behind why you need to study gases. Now, even in the new curriculum for the K-12 curriculum, uh, non sage majors also have this particular topic. Now, so when we speak of air pollution, uh, which is a problem right now, there are six principal criteria of pollutants. So carbon monoxide is on top of the list. Then we have the oxides of nitrogen and sulfur. Then we have the very dangerous ozone, which is responsible for the depletion of our ozone, uh, of our ozone layer. And the particulate matters, which is very also very, very uh, dangerous for those who have asthma and for those who have weak lungs. So particulate matters are those minute uh, particulate material that, we, that is present, that is suspended, that is remaining suspended in the atmosphere because of their very, <clears throat> because of their nature, that they are very uh, lightweight so they remain suspended actually they are classified as colloidal particles okay so let me check okay I'll just check the, the the writings on the chat box so commonly found throughout the country and causing a variety of negative effects on health environment and property so i just placed this in the beginning so that way you will have an appreciation of what you are studying so in air pollution, the term criteria pollutants comes from the fact that the uh, EPA uh, established a set of science-based standards or criteria for acceptable levels of this one. In our case, we have the Environment uh, Management Bureau or the EMB here in the Philippines that sees to it that from place to place, the corresponding percentage of these pollutants are in the acceptable as stated here, acceptable levels. So primary standards intend to protect health, and they also have secondary standards which intends to protect environment and property, and allowable levels less than one part per million. So it says that the concentration of these pollutants, identified pollutants by EPA, should be less than one part per million, or should be less than one milligram per milliliter. So that's one part per million. Now, the criteria pollutant nitrogen dioxide is emitted by, uh, by automobiles. So those automobiles that are, shall I say, more than 10 years old or more than 20 years old, they are not, their engines are not able, capable anymore to uh, burn fuel 100% effectively. So in that case, they produce this NOx. We call them NOx, a state place here. They, have, they are nitrogen oxides, oxides of nitrogen. So high temperatures inside these car engines cause oxygen and nitrogen to react to produce nitrogen oxide. So it could be NO3, it could be NO2. Now the brown color of the smog is due to the presence of a high content of nitrogen dioxide in air. So whenever air uh, is already colored brown, when I recall, that was, if I'm not mistaken, 2003. Most of you are not yet born. 2003, I think. 2003, 2004, when we have our plant tour in Manila, we, we only ride the boat. 
the boat from Bacolod and it will take us a day to reach Manila to the students. We know that we're near Manila whenever we look up at the sky and we see not a clear sky, but we see a brown sky. So you can see the massive air pollution already that is uh, experienced by Luzon or should I say by Metro Manila because we're going to compare where the buildings, the areas of the buildings at a far distance are and the, its uh, atmosphere is called brown. But when you look on the left and the right, it's clear. So meaning pollution is on that particular area. So the brown color is due to this presence of nitrogen dioxide. Now, a photochemical reaction, on the other hand, between your volatile organic carbons or compounds, which you will also study, and nitrogen oxides needs to ground level ozone. Now, these VOCs are hydrocarbons that readily evaporate, and ozone is a criteria pollutant. So they are responsible now why we have very warm weather because we don't have enough ozone layer to cover us. So the, the VOCs, especially, no, especially the halogens that are present in aerosol sprays when they already decompose, they react with the O3. So that is why our ozone layer is being depleted. So we don't have any more O3, but what is left is just O2 and the oxide and the oxygen that has reacted with this uh, CLs, the halogens, the ice, okay? So that is why it's very, it's one very pressing issue. Then I was, as was young, I was uh, as young as I was in, then in college, was in high school, that our teachers would tell us not to use aerosol sprays because they have this uh, halogens that reacts with ozone and is contributory to the depletion of the ozone layer. Okay, so these are the pollutant levels that vary with time of day. So you have here the concentration, and these are the pollutants, and these are the time of day. So this particular graph is uh, based on the data that is uh, taken on the western part of the globe because primarily our book is written by a foreign author. So the data that was used here, but I think this is reflective also comparable to our location. So the highest level of nitrogen oxide and nitrogen dioxide in air for a particular time of day is from 6 a.m. You have the highest here and you also have it around nighttime. 6 a.m., this is when a lot of automobiles maybe is on the road because of uh, 6 a.m. to 7 to 8 it will drop to nine because uh, those that are riding their automobiles, their cars for work are already in at work. So we, we have less of this. Then you have it here again, rising up during time to go home. So six, seven, it's starting to rise up again. So the long irritants are higher at noon. The highest peak is at a little bit after noon, so 1.30 in here. This is how you should interpret the graph. So the levels of these polyotons in air changes on a particular time of day. Now, so that's the reason behind why you have to study gases and why you have to learn how it behaves. Aside, of course, from its industrial application and the implication of how they behave in the industry. Okay. So what are the properties of gases? So they fill the volume of any container. They have much lower densities. You expect that they are less dense than solids and liquids. They vary in densities, especially when we speak of conditions like temperature and pressure. And they mix with one another readily and thoroughly. So readily and thoroughly meaning there's no problem with a particular species of a gas, if I would refer to it as species, or a type of gas to mix with another, primarily because they are very less dense and their molecules and their particles are very far apart that they can thoroughly mix with one another and produce a very homogeneous mixture afterwards. So here, change of volume is expected. So change volume dramatically with changing temperature. There would be a remarkable uh, observable change in the volume with change in 
temperature. This has uh, something to do with the loss as well. But in terms of how they behave, this is also uh, something to consider. Now, this is the idea gas law, the PBNRT equation. And this gives us the quantitative relationship between pressure volume. And on the right side, you have the most of the gas present, the absolute temperature. The R is your universal gas constant, which may have the following values, depending on the problem that you are processing. So if you are uh, you see, if you are processing an, a problem that deals with English units, oftentimes this is the R value that is suggested. And if it's SI, you have this one. Okay, the other units are also given in other books and other reference materials uh, for chemistry. So you need not have really a specific book for chemistry because chemistry is very basic. As to pressure, so last meeting we've discussed this one. So it's the pressure, it's the force exerted per unit area. So in the case of the atmospheric pressure, the force in atmospheric pressure attributed to the weight of air molecules above the Earth's surface is what we call as the pressure of the Earth's atmosphere. So it's the force that the atmosphere exerts above the Earth's surface. We know that as altitude increases, this atmospheric pressure decreases. So as we go up, pressure this decreases. The reason why when you have already, I'm sure you have traveled and you've been in an airplane, when the airplane goes up, you feel that you can't hear anymore because the airplane is being depressurized. Why we say it's being depressurized? Because as the plane goes up, the pressure there is very small or is lesser than the pressure below. So if your, your aircraft is, uh, it is at one atmospheric pressure, the tendency is it will explode. So it has to equalize the pressure outside. So there has to be an equal pressure outside and inside the aircraft. That way, your aircraft will stay as it is. That is why in our language, nagakabunggol, nakita kay ginadepressurize ang airplane. Kung hindi na siya pag depressurize malupok na siya, kay greater ang pressure sa sulod kaysa sa sagwa when the airplane goes up. Now, on the other hand, if let's say, for example, the pressure outside is greater than the pressure inside, uh, if there is not going to be any adjustment of the pressure inside the airplane, what will happen is your airplane will, uh, shall I say, be compressed. Just like if you have a, a soft drink can, a can of soft drink, when you mash it, that's what is going to happen to our airplane. It's going to be compressed because the pressure inside is lesser than the pressure outside. So, what do you That's it, according to uh, that's in our uh, language, vernacular language. So, it's here. Pressure, atmospheric pressure specifically varies as a function of altitude. And as altitude increases, pressure decreases. So, if we have here a balloon as an illustration, of uh, what's really happening inside the particles inside your balloon. So pressure is the result actually of the molecular collisions between gas molecules and container walls, which I've discussed also last meeting. Okay, so the, it's the constant, the term that I use, bombardment of your mol uh, molecules on the walls of your container that produces that, or that is measured in terms of pressure. So each collision imparts a small amount of force. And it is now, when you speak of the pressure, the sum of vast number of gas molecular collisions that are being produced is what we call as the pressure, the total pressure of the gas inside a particular container. You take the sum of this number of molecular collisions, that would be now what we call as the pressure of your sample gas placed in a particular container. Now we have this barometer. I'm sure your, your high school chemistry or physics teacher have shown to you the barometer. So it's a manner of, or it's an instrument. It's a sensing device for pressure. So you will know what's the atmospheric pressure based on the height in which this level of liquid metal mercury has uh, risen up your 
tube, your, shall we say, barometer tube, okay? So we know that pressure is, sorry class, uh, I take the wrong one. Share screen again. I'm supposed to annotate. Okay, we know that pressure just is white. Pressure is equal to rho GH. Okay, from high school and high school chemistry and physics. So in here, the pressure of the atmosphere, the pressure of the atmosphere is equal to the pressure here. The pressure due to this height of mercury. So that is why you're using the formula rho gh, the density of mercury, the gravitational constant g, and the height of mercury inside the inverted tube. Okay, so the pressure here and the pressure in this level are said to be equal. So that is why we say that the atmospheric pressure, the pressure of the atmosphere exerting on the surface of this mercury, where you have this inverted tube is equal to rho GH, okay? Based on the principle that equal levels have equal pressure when we speak of fluids, okay? Now we move on. So these are the different units of pressure. I've shared it also to you. And let's look into the history and the application of the gas laws. So before I review again on the gas laws, so gases change significantly when conditions in which they are found are altered. So the reason why we need to study gas laws is because you change one particular condition in which a particular gas specimen is subjected to, its behavior is also going to change. These changes are determined empirically using gas laws. So meaning the gas laws that we are using right now or we have been using ever since were actually derived from empirical uh, data. Meaning they perform an experiment. So when we speak of empirical, the data was taken from a particular or gathered through experiments. And those data were used to come up with the formula that we are now using. Or those data were used to establish the general behavior of gases based on changing conditions. Now we go first to Charles' law. So this is the second law I discussed then. So we'll go to Charles' law. So if we're going to plot the volume versus temperature for different gas samples, uh, converge at the same temperature as zero volume. So this is the basis of the Kelvin temperature scale. So what about Charles' law? So it gives you the relationship between volume and temperature when pressure is kept constant. So this time we have a process which is constant pressure and we are determining the relationship between volume and temperature. And if you're going to plot how volume behaves with respect to temperature, we increase the temperature, we also increase the volume. Okay, as long as pressure is kept constant. Okay, so Charles' law has this. It was shown to you also. So we say that V over T is a constant, or we say V1 over T sub 1 is equal to V2 over T sub 2. Or your V is equal to a certain constant, which is equal to the ratio of these two times the absolute temperature. Now, how is Charles' law stated? So for a fixed pressure and mole of gas, the volume and the absolute temperature of the gas are directly proportional. One increases, just like in here, the other one increases as well. So they are directly proportional. If you're going to liken the behavior of this particular gas and apply the concept of Charles' law, we keep pressure constant, we increase the temperature, the volume of the gas increases, so naga expand siya. Okay, we increase the temperature due to the application of this heat here, the volume of your gas increases. So in terms of a graph, this is the way it looks. We increase temperature, volume increases. Okay, take note, pressure was kept constant and we have the same amount of gas 
uh, placed in here in what we call the, the piston assembly, cylinder, piston cylinder assembly. This is your cylinder. You have a piston that goes up and down, free to move up and down due to the application of this heat energy. Okay, that's your Charles law. And I have already illustrated to you or shown to you the hot air balloon and the frozen balloon. I will not show it to you anymore to save us time, but I place it here. That way you can go over the slides again. Okay, as for Robert Boyles, this is when you have a constant temperature process and you check the relationship between pressure and volume. But this is unlike Charles law. Because in here, when pressure increases, volume decreases, and vice versa. If volume increases, pressure decreases. So as, as we say, uh, pressure and volume are inversely proportional. And we have this relationship. Okay? I've shown this relationship to you last meeting, that the product of pressure and volume is a constant, like P1V1 is equal to P2V2. So Boyle's law states that for fixed temperature and mole of gas, the pressure and volume of a gas are inversely proportional. So in this case, what we do now, we keep the temperature constant. So the amount of energy that, was, uh, that is being supplied to this piston cylinder assembly is the same because there's no increase of fuel that will increase the temperature of the gas inside. So what happens if we increase the the weights on top of the piston, that will increase also the pressure in which this particular amount of gas is subjected to. So we increase the weights, the volume decreases. You can see here, we increase the pressure, the volume decreases. Pressure increases here, volume decreases. Okay, that's for your Boyle's law. And this was shown to you, the relationship of Boyle's law with the respiration of a human being. Now we have Avogadro's law that states that for a fixed pressure and temperature, so this time we keep pressure and temperature fixed, the volume and mole of a gas are directly proportional. So this is just like Charles' law. We're in relationship of volume and the amount of gas or the number of moles of gas uh, is a constant. So we have B, equal to a certain constant times the number of moles of that particular gas. Okay, now if you're going to, uh, if you're going to collate or use up all three, combine all three laws, Jacques law or Charles law rather, Boyle's law and we have Avogadro's law, then we have what we call as the combined gas law or simply known as the ideal gas law. Okay, now we have it PV equal to NRT, so that the changing conditions are on are on one side of the equation. So PV for uh, the case of Boyle's law, and we have V and T in the case of Charles' law if you have constant pressure. And you have V and N in the case of Avogadro's law. Okay, so this is your one law. Uh, uh, comparar sa tatlo ka loss or summarizing the three laws. Okay? So, there are very important things that you need to know as to the units of the things that of the variables that appear in your ideal gas equation. So, your temperature must be in Kelvin for gases and negative temperatures would result in negative pressures, volumes, and moles. The, units for mo the unit for mole unit only for moles is always mole and the unit for pressure and volume can vary for a particular problem or gas calculation. So you just have to make sure that you have, if you use a particular, shall I say, universal gas constant, the units of your pressure, temperature, uh, and temperature and even volume are the same as the one that appears in the uh, universal gas constant that you have used. Okay, it's very important. I think that's very elementary. Uh, these are added. Uh, this one is not placed in there. So there's an added R value in here for universal gas constant expressed in liter tor, or this could be liter MMM, uh, MMHG uh, because your tor is also MMHG and mole per mole Kelvin. 
I will not anymore dwell in this in detail because these units are already discussed in high school. So this is the summary of the laws so far. Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Avogadro's Law, and we have this. If we transfer the P on the other side, then we have the PB equal to NRT. Now, so those are the things that I've talked about for the last 30 minutes are all about review of the things that we have discussed last meeting. So we will continue now with the concept of the partial pressure. So we use the concept of the partial pressure when we talk about gas mixtures. Okay, class, just give me a few minutes, huh? Excuse me. Okay, thank you for waiting, class. So um, the principle of the partial pressure is only applicable for a mixture of gases, just like, for example, air. And gas laws do not depend on the identity of these gases. So when you speak of partial pressure, it's the pressure that is, is, that is exerted by one particular component gas in a mixture of gases. So this is the pressure due to the total moles of gas present. Now the pressure exerted by a component of a gas, or by a component gas, so we should not have a of a mixture is called the partial pressure of that particular component gas. And so if you say, for example, you have a mixture of nitrogen, oxygen, and hydrogen. So if we want to know the partial pressure of nitrogen only, then that would be P with the subscript N2. That's the pressure exerted by nitrogen alone as a component or as one of the components in your gas mixture. And this is it. And we, I think you recall Dalton's law of partial pressure. The pressure of a mixture of gases is the sum of the partial pressure of the component gases. So if you have a particular component represented as one, another one is two, and another three, you take the sum of their partial pressures, then you will have what we call as the total pressure of your mixture of gases. Now question, how do we then determine the partial pressure of a particular component gas? Very simple. If you have a mixture of gases and you're given the temperature and the volume of that mixture of gases, you need only the number of moles of a particular gas and you can already determine its partial pressure. Now, if you're going to, on the other hand, determine the partial pressure of I, I being a particular component gas in the mixture, that would be equal to its mole fraction. The X here is the mole fraction of component I in the mixture times the total pressure. So it's just like saying, you allow me to annotate, that, that the partial pressure of component I over the total pressure of the mixture of gases is equal to the mole fraction of component I in your mixture of gases. Now in here, the, the symbol that is being used is X, but later on you will realize that when you speak of gases in your higher subjects, especially for CHE students in this class, this is represented as Y. So why for gases and for liquids, it's X. So that when you speak of more fractions of in gas, it's Y. When you speak of more fractions in the liquid mixture, that would be X. But nonetheless, in here, it's represented as X. But it could be also changed to Y depending on the reference that you are using. Okay? Now, 
So Dalton's law can be expressed in terms of also of mole fraction as presented in here. This is your mole fraction of component I in your mixture of gases. So mole fraction for a gas in a mixture is the moles of the gas divided by the total number of gas present. So again, if I will annotate here, the mole fraction of component I, or we can write this as capital YI, is equal to the number of moles of component I divided by the total number of moles of your mixture of gases. So if your problem does not give you specifically X sub I or Y sub I, you can determine it using this particular formula based on this statement here. More fraction of a gas in a gas mixture is the moles of the gas divided by the total moles of gas present. Okay, class, please interrupt me if it's not, if you can't follow. Okay. Now, let me proceed. Now, we go to gas densities. I think this will be the last topic before I give you the break and then we'll work on some problems that I have prepared here. That way, you will know how to work problems later on your own. So we go to gas densities and molar mass. I've mentioned a while ago that this molar mass is just the mass of one mole, or simply having a unit of gram per mole. We also have what we call gas densities. This gas densities is having a set of units just like liquids and solids having densities expressed in mass per unit volume. So that's still your, how the density of the gas is being expressed. So density has the units of mass over volume or per unit volume. And from our PVNRT equation, so I it was shown here on how the molar mass of the gas was uh, determined. So you have here, PV equal to NRT. If we transfer the V on here by division and RT product in here also by division, this is the NV that you see here, or rather the N over V that you see here. This N over V class is actually represented as density. Now in here, it's represented as D, small d. That's the density. The density which is raw, is equal to the pressure divided by the product of RT. Now, if we're going to multiply both sides of our equation by M, which is the molar mass of our substance, so I place here an M and we place here an M, that would be the, sorry, the M that you have here is the molecular weight. So I will define it here. M is molecular weight, okay? The M that you see here. So if this number of moles per unit volume is multiplied by, uh, by the way, class, I stand corrected, I'm sorry. This is not yet density because this is moles per unit volume. So Miss Alice stand corrected, okay? So it's still moles per unit volume. Now, if this moles per unit volume is multiplied by the molecular weight, which is gram per mole, now this is now your density. So, okay, wait. So this is now your density. So you multiply your left side of the equation by molecular weight. You also need to multiply the right side by molecular weight. That way your equation is not altered. So then we can say that the density of your gas is equal to M, rather PM over RT. Or that's your um, pressure multiplied to the molecular weight times the product of R and T. Now this molecular weight class, if you look very closely, its unit is gram per mole, right? It's taken from the periodic table. You can get from the periodic table the molecular weights of your gas. And since your gas is always uh, bimolecular or diatomic, then you will always have to multiply the atomic weights there or the molecular weight by two. So since this one is in gram per mole, if you recall, I say this is now the molar mass of your gas. 
molar mass or molecular weight, they mean the same. So from this set of slide, you will have slide rather, or this part of your slide, you have two formulas to recall. Density, density being equal to P times the molar mass or the atomic weight or the molecular weight divided by the product of RT and molar mass being equal to the product of density R and T divided by P. Now you may wonder why, where did this particular thing came from? Oh, the initial nagalin. So it's actually this one. Your RT was cross multiplied here, your P was placed in here. So this is now your molar mass. Okay, molar mass or molecular weight of your gas is equal to its density times R times its absolute temperature divided by the pressure. The density, on the other hand, is the product of pressure times smaller mass divided by the product of the universal gas constant and absolute temperature. So take note in this page or in this slide, you were presented with two formulas, that of density and that of molar mass or molecular weight. Okay, any questions so far? No questions? Let me see if I'll be going to a next topic already. Okay, so in terms of stoichiometry of reactions involving glasses, glasses rather, uh, we will discuss it later. So we first have some problems application or problems that will use up these particular principles that I have reviewed and discussed in uh, the previous slide. So allow me to share new screen. Excuse me, class. Ha, huh? I did not. Uh, check first my jump board. Okay, close my jump board. So I need to open a new one. Excuse me, class. Are you still there? Yes, Let me check there. Kasi na ang katawahan. Let me check. Can you give me a thumbs up sign? Any reaction if you're still there? Para pakamuda. Jim, kamo, are you still there? Jim, I don't see. Oh, what about KC, Ivaresto? Yes, yes, miss. Ah, okay. Ah, okay. Hans Caravana. Hans, are you there, Hans? Natulugan na goro si Hans. Hans. Yes, miss. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, you're still there. I know you. It's a struggle to be focused at this time. We're in. Everybody is taking a nap. So it's a challenge. Actually, it's also a challenge to me. Okay, so let me share a new screen. <clears throat> let me check if I can copy paste with class, huh? Cannot paste. Wait. Okay. So I cannot paste a problem. So let's process this problem. I just show to you the screen that I got. Sorry. Do not. Okay. Okay. 
things. I also don't have a soft copy of my book here. So I got this problem and we'll process it together. Okay. I will copy this in Word file that way. You can, you can go back to it anytime. Just give me a few minutes. It's this one, it, this, uh, these problems are different than the ones I gave you in your assignment. So I'll just copy because I cannot paste it in the Jamboard. I thought it could be pasted there, my class. Just a few minutes. Maybe we'll process three, then we'll have your break. So para makapindog ka muda, kag maka-exercise, kasi matulog ka na ka muda. Okay, I think this will do for now. I'll just increase the font. Okay, 25. Okay. Okay, now. I will show to you first the problem and then we'll try to check what particular thing we will use. That way we can answer what the problem requires. Okay, so allow me to share my screen again. Where is that? Okay, so you have here, can you see the three problems? Just give me a reaction if you can see the three problems. Okay, thank you. Now. In number one, a spray can is used until it is empty, except for the propellant gas, which has a pressure of 1,344 torr at 23 degrees Celsius. Now, if this same can is thrown into fire with a temperature of 475 degrees Celsius, what will be the pressure in the hot can? Okay, so again, Let's first read the first statement. So a spray can is used until it is empty, except for the propellant gas, which has a pressure of 1,344 torr at 23 degrees Celsius. Now, what's your understanding about this statement? Anybody can explain to me his understanding about this statement. So I'm sure everybody has seen a spray can, a spray can for cologne, a, a spray can for paint, a spray can for anything, a spray can. So what does this first statement tell you? Anybody? Para hindi ka muda matulugan. What's your understanding of the first statement? Tabudlay man galing kay anybody, no? Kay wala man sang tao nga ngalan niya anybody. O, kung wala sang may volunteer nga anybody, then I call a name. And what's your understanding about this statement? A spray can is used until it is empty. Except for the propellant gas, which has a pressure of 1,344 torr at 23 degrees Celsius. What is this? What does this tell you? May bilin pa misang kanis. Okay, so Mr. Aujero, very good. Kung magamit, kita ko na sang kanti, why tamay na siya ginahaboy niya, may unod pa siya. So allow me to just uh, speak in the vernacular language that we mentioned the hand. So Miss Key, kung amun amun mo na, wala na niya unod. Practically, ato pa na to ang propellant gas sa sulod. So let's say you have a spray can which had been emptied already. Wala na siya unod sa nga paint abi or cologne na kinanlan mo. So what is left inside that particular can is just the propellant gas. Whatever is that propellant gas identity is not any more important. Pasta may sulod siya nga propellant gas. The pressure inside is 1344 torr and the temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. Now, I will read the second statement. If the can is thrown into fire 
with a temperature of 475 degrees Celsius, what will be the pressure in the hot can? So, exempted na si Mr. Augero, mag-answer ha? So, ano ang pa-inchindi nyo sa second statement? If the can is thrown into fire with temperature 475 degrees Celsius, what will be the pressure in the hot can? Hmm? Any volunteer? Anong natabo sa second statement? Or what does the second statement say? Well, that's a ninda si Ahuero lang ako ni Sujante. Abe. What does it mean? Anyone? Malupok ang can, miss. Wala pa eh. Wala man sa namangkot kung what will be the pressure. Sambali, anong natabuhaw nga ginapamangkot tsaka sa pressure? What was done to that can? The emptied can, what was done to it? Ma, ano, miss? Madako siya, miss. Do mag, ano, do in a verge of explosion. Di ba? Do ga expand. Di ba? Ang can. Nga ahaw, nga it's about to, to explode. Wala matakabalo ko ano ang, ano ang... Hi, ano, miss. Kay it was under sa temperature and may under, ay under sa ging throne sa may sa init na temperature, miss. Which nga, which ginapangita tang pressure. Kay if makita tang pressure, um that's the time nga um, we can predict will explode or not. Hmm. Okay, so what particular law will we use? In this case, Avogadro's miss. Um, gay law sucks miss. Gay law sucks law. So it's a law that is not often discussed, right? Yes, so, miss. Who said about who mentioned that gay law sucks law? Wala na nasa gina discuss. Kaya actually, ang tatlo pa lang kalo. Okay, na na they will suffice because you will have actually the combined gas law if you use the three. But actually, you are right. Hindi ako nakita kung sino ito nag-mention sa gay law sa slow. Because this time, what, what is kept constant here? The um, volume is... Come again? The volume is... The volume. Who is this? Labdo, miss. Labdo. Very good. Very good, Mr. Labdo. It's the volume that is kept constant. Wala, hindi siya ginambal, no? Right? Wala, Wala, siya Wala siya ginambal. Pero kung ikaw naka-insindi, kabalo ka, gid, nga kung whatever is the gas that is contained inside the can, it will have the volume of that can. And whatever is the process in which that particular, or whatever is the condition in which that particular can is subjected to, the volume of the gas inside the tank, the can is constant. So, Mr. Labto is very, very correct. Though it's not stated here nga daw ka-elementary, gidbala nga pang state, bala kong high school, kay Mr. Keeping the volume constant, what will happen to the pressure? So, it's something, it's a problem that is stated in high school chemistry. It's like forthcoming what you will do because all you have to do is cancel the base in your combined gas law and then that's it. You will be able to know what the problem is requiring. But this time, it asks you to think because it does not even give you what, what particular law. It's not even like kung sa, ano, pabala, kung sa movie, gatanaw ka mo movie, gatanaw ka mo the sitcom sa TV, especially Filipino, na balang daw ka predictable, nabala kung ano yung pamangkot niya. Na, kung high school chemistry, amo na siya ang pagka-state sa problem. But this time, it's not stated that way. You're given an actual scenario and the one who wrote the problem is uh, waiting for you to, let's say, uh, uh, understand what it's requiring based on the information that is given. Para hindi na ko siguro manaog na of. I'll write here. Let's say if I can annotate in here para diretsyo. So, Mr. Labdo is correct. This is constant volume. This is gay law sucks law. The law that is not often is not as often uh, given because anyway, the three as I said was of this already. So for number one, I'll go straight here. Then we'll just go now. You will have the case of P one B one over T one equal to P two B two over T two. So you get to cancel the Bs because this is constant volume. This gives you P1 over T1 equal to P2 
over T2. The problem is actually asking for the pressure. Pressure. Okay? So I think you know fully well your algebra. So you will have a case here of P1 T2 over T1 being equal to P2. So all you have to do is never forget to let me go down. Never forget in the Shamana option. Never forget to um, convert your temperatures to absolute. So in this case, you have to use the absolute value. So you can keep the 1,300. So it's still better if I use the jump board because I will have pages there which will not, uh, which will not erase the things that I have written. Let me share the jump board so that uh, you, we can go back to later on what we have done already. Okay, can you share? Where is my jump board? Why can't I see it? Just give me a minute, Casa. I've opened already. Here it is. Hindi siya kitanon mag-share ako. So we'll share. What happened is, wait class ha, new share. Okay, there you go. So, I have written, I place here number one. I have written there below the problem that it's now P1 over T1 equal to P2 over T2. So if we want the pressure when the emptied spray can was placed into an environment which is at a higher temperature, then this will be your formula. So our pressure then, I will not share it to you so we can save time. Our pressure then is 1,344 Tor. So this is 1,344 Tor. Our initial temperature twenty-three, and the next is four hundred seventy-five. So we have here. 475, this is the temperature in which our can is placed into. So we add 273 to convert it to Kelvin. Then we have 23 initially as its temperature. So now it's expected that your pressure in the environment at 475 degrees Celsius will be higher than 1,344 torr. Okay, can you give me the value? Can you do the computation? I will just check 23 and 475. Okay. What's your answer for P2 for number one? Okay, somebody wrote in the chat box. It's 3000. Oh, which one? Is it 3395.28 or 3407.28? Okay, so I have a lot here who said it's P396.04. Okay, so this is now the pressure. I will go back to that thing that I have shared. This will be now the pressure of the spray can. The pressure of the gas or specifically the pressure uh, in which your propellant gas in the emptied spray, spray can has after it was placed into fire, it was thrown into fire at 475 degrees Celsius, okay? Now my time here, class is 2.37. I'll give you a break before we continue. You can stand, you can drink water, I will do. Come back by 2.45. I will just pause the recording. You, uh, anyway, you are already closing your come there. Come back at 2.45, okay? We will continue with this and the rest of the topic. Are you there? Give me a yes. thumbs up sign if you are already there. Okay, so yes, I guess. Thank you. So we go back to what we're working on. 
these two problems here, then we can proceed with the others. Okay. So number two, what is the temperature of an 11.2 liter sample of carbon monoxide, that's CO, at 744 tor, if it occupies 13.3 liters at 55 degrees Celsius and 744 tor? I think you know what is this. This is very simple. What is the temperature? of an 11.2 liter sample of carbon monoxide at 744 tor if it occupies 13.3 liters at 55 degrees Celsius and 744 tor. You are asked for the temperature given the volume and the pressure and you're given an initial condition that if it's subjected to a pressure of 744 at a temperature of 55 degrees Celsius, its volume will be 13.3. So what do you think when you apply in here? Except for the gentleman that has been answering me and want to hear new voices. So what do we do? Again? Charles Lomas. Charles Law. What's a better idea? What's another idea? Same law, Japanese. Ang P2, V2 over I P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Okay, so in here, since you're given an initial condition class that has all three parameters of your gas is complete, so it gives all three parameters of your gas, then you will use the combined gas law. Because in here, it's asking for the temperature given these two. Stating as well that if this is how it's been before, 13.3 liter volume at 744 torr, this is the temperature. So now it's asking what would be the temperature if we are given a different scenario. So a very simple case of the combined gas law. Okay, P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. So we go to our board. So if you're using a P1, V1 over T1 equal to P2, V2 over T2, you are asked... You are asked, actually, I will just go back to the problem, that temperature. So if it's the, the temperature, then you get it from here. So your T2 then is equal to P2 V2 over P1 V1 times T1. That's your T2 placed in here. Okay, so the rest you need only to substitute. Just make sure that your units will all be the same and your temperature is expressed in absolute value. So in this case, you have 12.2 for volume in the first scenario and 13.3 in the second scenario. 11.2 and 13.3. So I'll place here. Oh. 13.3 is B2. Okay, that's B1. Then as for pressure, I'll show to you the problem again. 11.2 and 13.3. And then we have... Uh, oh, B2... Is 11.2 and 13.3. I got it interchange. Oh, it was correct. Nagale. So this is 11.2 and 13.3. Okay, these are for our final initial volume. Our final. Pressure is 744. Actually, the guy who said it is same lang gali. So si Miss Ali ang na-overlook. Same pressure siya. So the same lang man gali. So this is, this is Charles Law as well. 
you can get the Charles law in here because this is constant pressure. So we can take out the um, pressure thing in here. Sorry for that gentleman whom I, I was asking for a better. Actually, his is better because you can cancel out the pressure. You need not place it there. You're just going to use Charles law. So we just need the T1. So the initial temperature, which is 55 degrees Celsius. So if it's 55 degrees Celsius, plus 273, okay, 0.50, 273. So you will have a T2 value here in Kelvin. So what's the T2 value? So it says that volume and temperature are directly proportional according to Charles law. So since there is a decrease in volume, we expect a decrease also in temperature. So what's your temperature? Let me check. 276.21. So 276.21 Kelvin. Thank you for... In Celsius, this is like 3.21 degrees Celsius, or even lesser if you subtract 273.15. So this is at a lesser temperature compared to the original temperature, which is 55. Okay, so do the, uh, do the lady who gave me the P1B1 over T1, uh, it's still working in this case because anyway, you can cancel the pressures which are equal. Okay, there's a raised hand here. Let me check. It's not able to see it. Who was raising the, his hand? I have a question. Yes. Okay, the same answer. Lang man gapon. Oh, Lang the same did. Actually, even if you don't know what law you are following, you won't get lost with the mixed gas law or the combined gas law because you only cancel the parameters that are equal. The, the things that remain are the only one that you will use to process the unknown. So in this case, you will still have the same answer. But nonetheless, the gentleman who said to me that uh, it should be Charles Law, it's, uh, it will not entail a lot of time because it's more direct when I mean, you know that it's Charles Law. You need not consider the pressure. But if you go back to the problem, as I said, and still process it using this one, you will later on, just like what I had realized, it's really Charles Law. Okay, I was not able to see that when I read the problem, the pressures are equal. Okay, so any question here? So temperature is 276.21 or 3.21 degrees Celsius. Okay, we go to the next. And I will share <clears throat> the last same page. We are given a 2.5 liter volume of hydrogen measured at negative 196 degrees Celsius, and it's warm to 100 degrees Celsius. Calculate the volume of the gas at a higher temperature, assuming no change in pressure. Now, this one now is very obvious that you will use Charles law because there is no change in pressure. So actually it's the same as the previous one, only that in here, uh, if you just read, just like me, if you just read it for the first time and you're not going to write down the given and the required, you won't realize initially that the pressures are the same. So in this case, if there's no change in pressure, you're still going to use Charles Law. Okay, so number three is still Charles Law. And since we know already that it's Charles Law, then we go straight to our formula for Charles Law. So if pressure is kept constant, we have V1 over T1 equal to V2 over T2, okay? Our problem says that to, you have a 250 liter hydrogen measured at negative 196. So initially you have this as your 
B1 and your T1. 250, 2.5 and negative 1. 2.5 and negative 196. So you have here a negative 196 plus 273. And you have here a 2.5 liter. This is Kelvin. Now your volume is sought when your hydrogen was warm. So you can increase your temperature to 100. So you have here 100 plus 273. So this is in Kelvin. So you will have a volume, of course, having the unit in liters. So what is our answer here? You have... Twelve point eleven. Po may nagsend sa ako sang solution. <laughs> Where did you get this? Anyway, I took it from the internet, so it has an answer. But just for illustration purposes, okay? So you have twelve point eleven. What have you noticed? We increase the temperature. What happens to the volume? It also increases. So that's Charles' law. Keeping pressure constant. Okay. Now, let me check if I still have problems here, which we can process based on what I have so far discussed. Like this one. Okay, we'll copy it. Let me just increase the form. Okay. share again new screen share how many grams of gas are present in each of the following cases so you have volume you have pressure and you have temperature this is just you, you will be using what i'll just give one example here the rest you can do on your own you will just use the what Ideal gas law. Okay, ideal gas law with the what? So if you use the ideal gas law, I think that was Mr. Labto again. So if you have letter A, you have PB equal to NRT. So we will be assuming that these gases they are actually not ideal gases. They are real gases. But we will assume that they are behaving ideally. That way we can make use of the ideal gas law. I want the mass. How many grams? So that would be the mass. So if I will derive in here the mass, so I will have number of moles is equal to PB over RT. How do I convert moles to mass? This is moles. The problems are asking for mass. How many grams? So what will I use? Nang i-multiply means ang molar mass. Okay, so you're going to use the molecular weight or the thing that we have discussed about the molar mass of your gas. So it will depend on the gas that is given here. So in the case of letter A, so then we will have to multiply both sides of the equation by molecular weight or that's the molar mass. So now N times the molar mass is the mass of your gas. And we have PB m over rt as the mass so in the case of carbon dioxide you're given a point one zero zero liter of this carbon dioxide a volume that's the volume the pressure is 
307 tour. Okay, so we need to convert the tour to, uh, you can have it in ATM because we'll use the R, which is liter ATM. So anybody who knows the conversion? Tour to ATM. Okay, 760 tour to one ATM. You will know later why I converted because we cannot use the R that we will use if we stick to the tour. Okay, and then this is our pressure and that's the volume. As for the molar mass of carbon dioxide, your carbon is 12, your oxygen is 16 times 2, that would be 32. This is 12. So in total, you will have 44 gram per mole as its smaller mass. So you will place here 44 gram per mole. Okay? For the M. Then we divide by R. So the R that we'll be using is the 0 0.08206 liter ATM per mole Kelvin. So review your R's, uh, the R's that I presented to you. Then we multiply it with the temperature in absolute value. So 273. So this is now in Kelvin. So in this case, you get to you get to cancel the liter unit, the ATM unit. After I've converted tor to ATM, then you have the mole unit and the Kelvin unit, giving you a unit in grams for the mass. So you have now the mass of carbon dioxide present in this sample, which has a volume of 0.100 liter, a pressure of, seven, of 307 tor and 26 degrees Celsius. What's the answer, class? Point seventy three point zero seven. 73, 0 0.07. That's the answer. I only have two answers here. Let's see the others. Point zero seven. Okay. Point zero eight. One here is point zero eight. So we'll go for point zero seven grams. What about the rest? When you do this in your calculator, just do it like this. 0.1 times 307 divided by 760 times 44 divided by this, divided by this quantity. So no need for you to place so many parentheses. Okay, so it's really 0 0.07 because a lot were giving me this value. Okay, thank you. The rest in here you can do on your spare time. You can get the screenshot and then practice solving for it. Okay, as for the application of the molar mass of the gas to get the mass, okay, from the use of the ideal gas equation. Okay, any question? So again, we will continue with our PowerPoint. So I will share, we'll go back sharing there. And let me check how. Huh? Okay, this is the part where we ended. So we go now to the stoichiometry of reactions involving gases. So later on, later on, especially in higher years, when you go to uh, thermodynamics and even physical chemistry, you will be uh, presented with problems involving reactions of gases. So if that is the case, don't forget that you can always, you can always assume ideal behavior for your gas, even if it's not. And you use ideal gas law. That way you can determine whatever is required using the given stoichiometry, uh, reaction stoichiometry. Plus when we speak of reaction stoichiometry, it simply refers to the chemical reaction, the the A plus B giving you C plus D. Okay, so when you speak of reaction stoichiometry, it refers to this one. And then it reminds you that when you are given problems in which gases are reacting, you are to use its 
this one. Primarily, you are to use the coefficients that are written before the species. Let's say the species that I'm referring to is species A, B, C, D <clears throat> in your chemical reaction or in your reaction stoichiometry. Okay, let me clear this one. Now we move on. So we are to remember, this was given also to your last meeting, that the STP is applicable in this case. The standard temperature and pressure for a gas is zero degrees Celsius or 273.5 Kelvin and 1 atm. As for its volume for one mole of it, that would be 22.41 liters. Okay, specifically, commonly it's only 22.4. Okay, so this would be the values that you will be using at standard temperature and pressure condition for your one mole of ideal gas. Now we go to the part wherein we have really a lot to discuss, and this is the kinetic molecular theory and the idea gas versus the real gas. When we solve problems using the idea gas equation, we always start with the solution assuming ideal behavior. We always write that because we assume that the gas is behaving like a, an ideal gas. If a gas is not behaving ideally, your thermodynamics later on will give you uh, detailed equations, actually several option equations to choose from. That way you can really correctly, accurately give the value of the pressure, the volume of that particular gas when it's not assumed to be behaving ideally. But we will not jump to that because that's still in thermodynamics. I will just give you one particular uh, equation that will be accounting for the behavior of real gases towards the end of this uh, part in the lecture. So now we go to kinetic molecular theory, commonly written as KMT. Uh, it discusses in details in the form of postulates the behavior of gases when they are assumed to be behaving ideally and when they're not. So gases do not always behave ideally. So we know that. So non-ideal behavior frequently seen at, take note of this, Non-ideal behavior is always at elevated pressure, at high pressure. Now, non-ideal gas behavior is explained using the KMT theory in the form of postulate. So if you would be asked, when is it normally uh, observable that a gas will not behave ideally? So this is the answer for that. At high pressures, gases don't behave ideally. So kinetic molecular theory provides connections between the observed macroscopic properties of gases, the gas law equation, and the behavior of gas molecules on a microscopic scale. Now, there are two terms here which may, which may be the first time you have encountered. We have macroscopic properties and microscopic scale. So KMT provides uh, you a connection between the behavior of a gas as a whole meaning already considering all the molecules that, it pre that is present in that particular gas or considering already the amount of matter present in the, in the gas. So shall we say macroscopic view. But when we speak of microscopic scale, now you're going to connect its behavior on the macroscopic scale to its behavior when we look into already uh, down to the level of the atoms the molecules of that particular gas. So we connect these two, macroscopic behavior and microscopic behavior of the molecules of the gas, using still the loss of the ideal gas or the ideal gas loss that we have discussed already. So that's the purpose of the KMT or the kinetic molecular theory. So let's go to the postulates. See postulates that the mga ano siya, the mga subtopics under KMC or theories, sub theories under it that best explains the theory itself. It says here a gas is made up of a vast number of particles, and these particles are in constant random motion. We know this already. We know this even without the 
the KMT because we know that our gases are made up of particles that are very far apart. And as such, since they are far apart, they are always in what we call excited state. Excited in the sense that they are free to move about. So they are in constant random motion. Now, particles in a gas are infinitely small that they occupy no, uh, there was a missing word here, specific volume. Because why? You put them in a very small container, they fit there. That's their volume. You place them in a very big container, that's also their volume because they are infinitely small. Okay, so that's under KMT. Now, particles in a gas move in straight lines, except when they collide with each other or with the walls of the container. This is a given. Kung wala man lang siya bungguan, si diritsyo siya eh. Kung may mabungguan siya, then it will somehow be uh, deviated from the path in which it is moving. So collision with each other and with the walls of the container are elastic collisions so that the kinetic energy of the particles is conserved. So elastic meaning if they bump into a particular gas particle, it's possible for them to go back into the same location where they came from. They'll be disturbing their path, but they'll be going back to where they came from before they, were, uh, they bumped that particular gas molecule. This has something to do with this. So it's elastic, so take note of the term. The collision are elastic in the sense that kinetic energy of the particles should be conserved. Okay? <clears throat> now we move on. Now particles in a gas interact with each other only when collisions of course. It's a given. If they don't collide, they don't have interaction. The average kinetic energy of the particles in a gas is proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas and does not depend on the identity of the gas. This is very important and this is written here as one of the postulates of KNT. The average kinetic energy of the particles is proportional to the absolute temperature of the gas and is not dependent on the identity of the gas. What does this say? The more you heat up a container, the more excited would be your gases. So if they are excited, they will have greater amount of kinetic energy on the average because we're talking of the particles of your gas, meaning summa total na siya. Okay, so proportional to the absolute temperature. We increase the temperature, we increase the kinetic energy. We decrease the temperature, we lower the kinetic energy of the particles of the gas. <clears throat> now, speaking of the average kinetic energy of your gas molecules in your gas sample at absolute temperature, it's like this. Though it's dependent on temperature, it's directly proportional to temperature. This is how we determine or account for it. Kinetic energy is one half the product of the mass and the average speed of your gas molecules. Okay, so mass times the square of the velocity. So it's, it's average kinetic energy. As temperature increases, average speed for the gas molecule increases. Why will this increase? This will increase because this one already increased due to an increase in temperature. Now, faster moving molecules collide more often, exerting a higher pressure. So in here, now we introduce another parameter, pressure. So it follows that, let me annotate, greater kinetic energy greater temperature greater kinetic energy greater speed greater pressure all directly related directly proportional increased temperature results to an increased kinetic energy resulting to an increased average speed resulting to a higher pressure why higher pressure? The greater the speed, the greater the probability of your molecules to collide. The greater the probability of your molecules to collide, of course, the greater the pressure. 
As discussed a while ago, pressure is related to the number of bombardments of your gas molecules either with each other or with the walls of the container. So you see these three now being connected and they are directly proportional in relationship one and to another. Okay? So all of this under KMT. Feel free to ask questions if you have questions. Now, related to, so we'll just have a break here on the postulates, but there are still a lot of postulates there. Related to it is the concept of the molecular effusion and diffusion of gases. So effusion, diffusion. Now, as the kinetic energy increases, the velocity of the gas molecule increases. We know that it was just a few seconds ago. The average kinetic energy of the gas is related to its mass given this particular formula. In the previous slide, this E is represented as KE, capital KE, meaning kinetic energy. This U is represented as V, the velocity. Now, this is how we determine the average kinetic energy of the gas in terms of its mass and its velocity. Now, let's say we consider two gases at the same temperature, pariho sila temperature. The lighter gas in this case has higher RMS than the heavier gas. Ang mag gas has greater uh, RMS than the heavier gas. I'd like to annotate this one before I ask a question. So two gases, this is our scenario, at the same temperature. So meaning applicable ang concept ka ina. The lighter gas, a higher temperature, as a higher RMS rather, the lighter gas has a higher RMS than the heavier gas. Now there is this RMS thing. R, I'm not sure if this was mentioned in high school. Anyone here who knows what is RMS? Represented now as mu, but is also equal to V in the standard formula for kinetic energy. Anybody who knows what RMS is? Was this discussed in senior high? If this is not discussed in high school chemistry, okay lang. Eh, wala magini siya gina-discuss ang high school ako. But sa college ko, which is first year and second year you have, first year you have your chem, and that's equivalent to senior high chem, this should have been covered. What is RMS? If you don't know, it's okay. But I'm just asking whether, so I will have an idea whether this is covered in senior high chemistry. What is RMS? Don't Google it because I won't know. Just I just want to know whether you know. So nobody knows. RMS is root mean square speed. So wala na siya gibutangan pa S niya isa. Root mean square speed. Ma'am, is root mean square speed. You see the square root? Because in here, mathematically, we can determine this velocity as three times the product of R times the absolute temperature divided by the molar mass of the gas. This is the root mean square speed that now you will substitute in here in the formula for the average kinetic energy of your gas particles. Okay, the, the U would be this one. It's square root of 3RT over M, the molar mass, or we call it the root mean square speed. Okay, that's the U that you will substitute in here. So your U, your root mean square speed, if you look at it now, is dependent only on two things, temperature and molar mass. If the two gases that we are to compare have the same temperature, then you have it only dependent on molar mass. And it says here, the lighter the gas, the higher the RMS. The heavier the gas, the lower the RMS. How do you explain it? Anyway, you can explain it using the formula. The lighter the gas, the higher the U or the RMS. 
Otherwise, it will be less. We can explain it using the formula that was shown in this slide. It's already given that the two gases that we're comparing is at the same temperature, meaning this T, just like this R and this 3 will be canceling each other. The only remaining expression for your gases will be the square root of 1 over molar mass. I'm already guiding you. So how do you explain the lighter gas has a higher R and S than the heavier gas? Are you still there? Give me a reaction if you're still there. Oh, ara pa sila. Oh, okay, eto na. Oh, ni ban, wala reaction. Natulugan na. Care? Are you still there, Care? Oh, ara pa si Care. Who can explain using this formula? It's actually this formula that can explain well this particular generalization for two gases at the same temperature when you compare the root mean square speed. Now, who can explain it? It's, it will not use chemistry. It will simply use math. Anyone? Amen. Okay, lab two again. Who is this? Lab two, me. Oh, sige na lang, iho. Natulugan na sila, gorotan na ba si Dua na lang tadi? O oh, may nag, ano, tubalikin na si Kier. Yes. Um, kay if, lo, if lighter ang ang gas, miss, ang ang iyang, uh, ang iyang uh, divisor is also smaller. Mm -hmm. While if heavier ang gas, ang iyang uh, divisor is Mas taas. So, kung i-divide mo ang 3RT, ang iya, sa, eh, sa lower, sa lighter nga gas, mm -hmm. ang iya nga RMS will be higher, miss. Kaya tungod nga kung nga, ang iya nga, pro, nga, nga quotient is higher, man. Kaya tungod nga, nub, nga nubo ang iya nga divisor. While if sa heavier naman niya, miss, kag, mas taas ang iya nga molar mass, ang 3RT Kung i-divide ta ang 3RT ng ma-lower siya, miss, kaya tungod nga taas, yeah, divisor. Very good. Very good, Mr. Labto. Din yung reaction ko, man. Di ko makita akong reaction. Oh, I cannot see my reaction. Very good, iho. That's it. Mathematically, if you divide something by a small value, the value of the T increases. Try to divide by 1 million by 0.1, it will increase the more. But try to divide 1 million by 100, it will decrease. So that's the same thing with this. You divide, if the gas is said to be lighter, mag-ansha, its smaller mass is less. So the value of this will be big. So the square root value will also be big. So that is why they are inversely proportional. Now, if this thing, this M, this smaller mass is bigger, meaning you have a heavier gas, the value will be smaller for this entire thing. Because you divide something by a bigger value, its value will lessen. Okay, so then your RMS will be lesser. Do you get it? Or butang tabi, hindi pa ta mag class chemistry. Ah. Miss Ki, ano na lang gidya ng day-to-day -day observation nyo? Di yung dasig maglagan ng tambo kung ang niwang. Hmm? Di yung dasig maglagan, di ba ang niwang? Yung tambo gani guru, wala pa nang kalabo isa ka lima ka metro ha po una na pero ang iwan niya okay pa na makadlagan pa na so it's the same thing with gases lighter gases travel faster or have a root mean square speed which is higher than heavier gases do you get it my question wala question sige ah ma continue ko kung wala question okay so you have here, I have here a graph. I snipped it from a book, I think. Uh, in here on the vertical axis, you have the fraction of molecules within uh, 10 meters per second of indicated speed. The fraction of the molecules which has already reached more or less 10 meters per second of speed. And this is the molecular speed of the molecules. So look at it. You have O2, you have N2, 
you have H2O, you have helium, and you have hydrogen. Now, try to compare their speeds. Try to compare their speed. The in mas dasik, si hydrogen, si helium, si water, si nitrogen, or si O2. Here, in here. Of course, hydrogen, right? Dasik si yao. Dasik si hydrogen, right? Molecular speed here is sila hasta lang di o, hasta lang di sa sa 25 times 10 raised to 2. Siya, pwede pa siya kalabo 35 times 10 raised to 2. Ang pinakabugat nga si oxygen, hasta lang sa 10 times 10 raised to 2 meters per second. Now, how do I know that? Kung tanaw mo sa periodic table, ang ilas si ni molar mass, amun niya siyang pinakamagaan. Check nyo sa periodic table. So naturally, in terms of the average number of molecules, the fraction of the molecules having reaching a velocity of 10 meters per second, mas dako si H2. Mas makadako siya sa reach, sa speed, kaysa sa iba niya. Yung iba niya, o, oh, asta lang siya sa, amun na ning pinakadako, yung nga fraction sa molecules, nga ang speed niya 10 meters per second. Muna ni pinakadako. Ari ya, ari siya ho. Reaching uh, 20 by, this is 20 by 10, raised to 2 already. So the heavier your gas, the slower it is when it moves. Or its root mean square speed is uh, slower. The lower the molar mass, the higher the RMS. Okay, so we go now to Ang gina-discuss na pa lang diri actually is the manner of determining the speed, the root mean square speed of our gas molecules in relation to their molar mass. Wala ata pa matouch ang topics na ari diri o gin-mention molecular effusion and diffusion. These are two very different things. So what's molecular effusion and what's molecular diffusion? Before ko magad do sa next na slide, anybody who has an idea what's effusion and what's diffusion, pwede nyo man i-google, pero I'd like you to be honest, sinong may idea kung anong difference between the two? Diffuse, effuse. Not also presented in senior high chemistry? Sige. Okay. It's okay. You will learn it anyway in here. And let me just erase. So we go to the next slide, which talks about Graham's law of, take note, effusion. Effusion. So as kinetic energy increases, the velocity of the gas molecules increases. We know that Ke is equal to one half mu squared or epsilon is equal to one-half mu squared. Effusion, so ang muna kinaging pamangkot ko, is the escape of a gas through a tiny hole, a balloon, and in the case of a balloon, will de deflate over time due to effusion. So the effusion thing here is how will the gas molecule, molecules escape from or through a tiny hole. Escape of a gas through a tiny hole. So when a when a balloon deflates or when a tire deflates due to the presence of a hole on it, then it's the gas molecule that escapes through from the balloon or from your tire through passing through the tiny hole. So that is effusion. Okay, effusion. So may may kinan may requirement ang effusion. Ano yung requirement? Kinan lang may hole. May hole nga dira, ma-escape gas. Okay, so uh, escaping through a tiny hole. That's your effusion. So the rate of effusion can actually be quantified. So kung ma-quantify ta ang root mean square speed based on the average kinetic energy or we can determine the average kinetic energy knowing the root mean square speed, we can also determine effusion 
of gas molecules through a tiny hole. So, effusion pala ang na-discuss. Wala pa na-discuss ang diffusion. Okay? Now, so this is effusion. So, consider two gases with molar masses, M1 and M2. The relative rate of effusion is given by. So, let me annotate. Ha? The R's that you see here, this R that you see, are the effusion rates. Effusion rates of what? So, effusion rate of gas 1 is R sub 1. Effusion rate of gas 2 is R sub 2. What does it tell you? It simply tell you that ano kada sig mag-escape si gas 1 through a tiny hole based on or uh, in relation to ano kada sig or comparing it to sa kada sigun man sang pag-escape ni gas 2 through that particular same hole. So if you have one if you have a container, you place it first with gas 1, and there's a hole in that particular container, ano kadasig mag-effuse ang gas particles ni gas 1 through that hole. Now, you totally evacuate that container, meaning you empty it out of that particular gas, meaning evacuum mo siya, then you place their gas 2. What would be the rate of effusion of the particles of gas 2 to that same tiny hole in which the particles of gas 1 effuse through? Now, there's no specific formula class that will solve the rate of effusion of one particular gas, uh, one particular gas particles. But rather, what we have is a comparison of which of the two gases will effuse faster. So again, we're using here, we're using here molar masses. Now, based on what you could see, anybody who can tell me which of the two gases will effuse faster to a given tiny hole of the same size on, a, on the same container where they are placed into? The gas with a higher molar mass or the gas with a lower molar mass? Based on the formula that you are seeing. Uh, if you want to be sure, you can substitute values here so you would know your answer to me. Let's say gas 1 has the smaller mass, M1, and gas 2 has the smaller mass, M2. You can place values for the two. Which of the two gases will effuse faster compared to the other? The gas with the higher molar mass or the gas with the lower molar mass? I gave you... Lower. Lower mass. Okay, so may answer na lower mass. Abi, it check new. Mathematically, is it right to say that the gas with a less molar mass will have an efficient rate which is faster than the gas with the higher molar mass? I will not say it's right or wrong for now, but I will check whether there's a, there's a student here who will, or there's somebody here who will not agree with that lady. Na mas dasig, miss mag-effuse ang gas na less ang molar mass. Isa sa gas with higher molar mass. Okay, I give you a minute. Or sure na kamo. Let's see. Let's check on the reactions. Give me a hard sign if you say that. Okay, let me just view gallery. Okay. Give me a hard sign if you agree with that lady. The gas with the lesser molar mass will diffuse faster than the gas with the heavier molar mass. Wala man. <laughs> Di ano ka mo. Tingin ka mo sa tunga ka mo. Di ka mo red. Di, ah, di ka mo black. Di ka mo white. Gray lang ka mo. Which of the two will effuse faster through a tiny hole? A gas with the less molar mass or a gas with a high molar mass? I have one in the chat box. Nahuya. Okay, so someone here says, 
the gas with a higher molar mass will diffuse faster. Isa lang. So the rest ka more low molar mass. Hmm? I will show to you later on which of the two groups answered it correctly. You can do that using mathematics. Even if you don't Google. If you use diba means, yes, if you use faster. Which one will effuse faster? The one which has higher molar mass or the one which has lesser molar mass? So, si John Labto lang nagsiling na ang ma-effuse faster ang high molar mass. Hmm? Okay. Wala na. Tanan ka mo with the lady or ang duha lang may sila. Ang iban, wala ka balo. Paglain pa kung ano yung sabat nila. Give me a reaction. Are you with labto or are you with the lady? If you're with labto, give me a heart sign. Ah, uh, no. If you're with the lady, give me a heart sign. Guess lang na, miss. <laughs> okay lang. There's nothing wrong with guessing. Oh. So, I have at, at least si Marian. Yan may gimpili. Gidi ang iba niya. Ano ni sila yaman? Oh. Si Drew siya nagkadlaw lang. Mm, may nag-heart na si Janessa, si Kyle. Oh, meaning with the lady sila. So, tanawon. Tagig kung sino yung chakto. Lo, lo, late send. Oo, oh, late send na ni Mariona. <laughs> Kayo na, wala na ang siran. Anyway. Okay. Be? O, lagi ka. So, sige, tanawon. Tamo na. Ito ang formula. O, suli. Ay, sila. O, sige, tanawon. Ta. Mabutang, ibutang ka sa samat. Tanawang tagid kung sino ang tsak to. Ang wala yan nagpili, ang bot maano na lang kamuya. Mainiminimay ni mo na lang guro kamuya kung later on kamu na lang ma-answer. Hindi man ang musina. Kinalang mag-answer kamu, may basihan. Even if you guess, you should, you, you should give an intelligent guess. Ang muna ba nila bla? Not a wild guess, but an intelligent guess. Kung nagsala ka, at least yeah, may gin... May gin, ano, kagidya balaya, may gin tindugan, kagidya nga muna yan, kung piliin mo, ano muna, karoon kaya muna yan, sala lang ko yan eh, dali lang. Kaya hindi ko na makita ang akong jump board. Wait. Hindi na to siya. Para na siya. Kaya every time I open a different thing, hindi na siya makita. Okay, let me share again. Ay, sorry. Presently, you sharing is paused. Did, did I pause? New share. You let me know if you can see the blank board. You see the blank board? Wala, miss. Ay, Lang. nga. Ang aging post ko ko, no? Dali lang, gigasa. Resume. Oh, do you see the blank board? Yes. Okay, okay. So, butang tato, ha? You have diffusion rate 1. This is for gas 1. And molar mass 1 is for gas 1. So, let's say mo the... Our gas one, let's say, is oxygen. So I have here 32. Okay? Now I have R2. Makumpare lang man tamo. Kondiin si ila mas faster. Let's say, uh, molar, uh, okay, molar mass of gas 2. Let's say my gas 2 is hydrogen. Hydrogen gas, so it's 2. Right? Okay? So mga formula ko eh, no? R1 over R2 is equal to the square root of it's ole, it's ole, according to my daughter. So M, if it's one here, so this is two, and that's M one. Diba? Si masiling ka mo nag-change, check talawat ang atun formula. Excuse me. So go to the slide. Formula is check. So one here, one here, two here, two here. Crisscross atun subscript sa. So go back to our board. We'll see. So rate of R1, comparing it to R2, is equal to, what's the molecular weight of oxygen? 32 divided by 2, and that's the square root. So the rate of 1 to R of 2, diffusion rate that is the square root of, uh, what is this? 16, right? So the rate of effusion of R1 to R2 is equal to 4, right? Chakto pa math ni Miss Ali. 
So the rate of effusion of gas 1 is four times the rate of effusion of gas 2. So which is higher? Sinong sakto? Sinong sakto, class? Si labto at itong mga nag-heart-heart. Remember, this R1 is heavier. O heavier siya. Si R2 ng lighter. So, when the rate of effusion of, of gas 1 is 4 times the rate of effusion of R2, which of the two is bigger? Wala, silent sila. Which of the two is bigger? Oh? Rate of effusion of gas 1, in this case oxygen, is four times the rate of effusion of hydrogen. So, the in si ila mas dasig. Si oxygen kung si hydrogen. Hydrogen, ma'am. Teh, kung di tsak to si lab to. <laughs> di tsak to si lab to. O, oh, ang imo guess tsak to. Okay. It doesn't follow that if your gas is light, makadasok sa dasig sa tiny hole. Its rates of effusion to a tiny hole is faster. No. The heavier the gas, the greater the possibility of it passing through the tiny hole faster. Through the tiny hole faster. So, Mr. Labdo is correct. So, if you would be asked a simple question, a true or false question, which one will, uh, or rather, which of the two, it's not a true or false, no? True or false, a heavier gas will have a higher rate of diffusion than a lighter gas. The answer is true. So actually, the probability of getting a right answer is the same as the probability of getting a wrong answer. So pariho lang sila probability that you will be right or wrong. But a simple true or false sometimes is the waterloo of majority of my students because... When I ask a question, it has always a basis. It's not something that you probably have just crossed, when you, you come across when you read, but something that is founded upon mathematically in principle by theorems or postulates, just like the ones we are discussing now. Okay, so any question? So, ang nagdaog sa subong hapon si Mr. Labto. Okay, now. Di na ta mag-break ha. Let's see. Kung di na ta matapos. Sa puso ko lang niya ang hindi part. Kung ala-ala, i-continue ta lang. You share next. Okay. We go to the next. So that is your effusion. Only those molecules that hit the small hole will escape through it. Therefore, the higher the RMS, the more likely of a gas molecule hitting the hole. <clears throat> Okay. Consider two gases of molar masses M1 and M2. The relative rates of effusion is given by this. So this was shown to you a while ago, class already. So R1 over R2 is equal to M2 over M1. So based on the statement here, this one, that the higher the, heart, the RMS, the more likelihood of a gas molecule hitting the hole. So, amunin siya, the U1 over U2. And since U1 and U2, the root mean square speed is given by this formula. What happened is, let me annotate, the product of 3RT here, we just canceled out. So, the M2 went up, the M1 went down. So that is why you have this two being related a while ago. The root mean square, uh, no, not, not the root mean square speed, but rather the rates of effusion, basing it on the molar masses of our gas. Now, diffusion. Now, let's go back to my question a while ago. What's the difference between effusion and diffusion then? I was not able to place the definition of diffusion here. Wala. So what's the difference between diffusion? Anong diffusion how? What is your understanding of diffusion? Just like when you're wearing a perfume. What's happening there? 
Is it diffusion? Paglapta, correct. So, if you're wait, uh, if you're <laughs> para makadla ka mo. If somebody farts, that's diffusion. When when you are inside an air conditioned room and somebody farts and you are more than 10 meters away from that person and you can still smell the fart. So that's diffusion. The gas molecules of the fart of that person or ang utot sa sina nga tao naglapta sa bilog ng classroom or sa sina nga room. That's diffusion. Ang effusion, ang mutong ginaba ko sa inyo, may requirement kasi dapat may istorya na gita about sa ina nga tiny hole na dira maagi ang gas so that it can escape a particular container where it is contained. So diffusion is the spreading of the gas molecules or particles that way it occupies the space where you place it into. Diffusion is already defined as the escape through a tiny hole of gas particles contained in a particular confined space. Okay? Now, let's go to, I think I'll end here because I'm sure kapoy na kamo. So, diffusion and the main free path. Di ba siling ta ang gas molecules excited always? And since they are excited always, though they are very far apart, Will come, they will travel in straight lines and it will come to a point that will bump into another gas. How far, how far will a particular gas molecule travel in straight line before it comes another gas? That has something to do with what we call as the mean free path. Yes, so the mean free path. So it has something to do with diffusion because a gas, your gas particles cannot diffuse through a particular space kung hindi siya mag-travel. Kung mapabili, nandiyan siya sa lugar yun, hindi niya i-cover ang bilog na space. So diffusion of a gas is the spread of the gas through space. So aram na siya gali. Okay, I thought I did not trace it there. So diffusion is faster for light gas molecules. It's a given. Dasig maglapta kung mag-an. So diffusion is significantly slower than RMS speed. So the root means square speed. Consider someone opening a perfume bottle. It takes a while to detect the odor, but RMS speed at 25 degrees Celsius is about, you take note of this, huh? at standard conditions, standard in 25 degrees Celsius, 1,150 miles per hour ang RMS speed sa gas molecule. So muna ang ako may mangutot, dasi din mo panimauan. Ang iya auto, tika da, sigali sang iya nga pag-spread sang gas at this particular temperature. Okay? So, diffusion is faster for light gases. Just like, just like the root mean square speed being higher for light gas molecules. Diffusion is slowed by gas molecules colliding with each other. So, ang mga akong istorya ka ina, mauntat mala na ang diffusion kung mabunggo na siya sa isa ka gas. Okay? Let me clear. We continue. So the average, I'm here now. So this is the main thing that I mentioned about the relationship of diffusion to mean free path. It's the average, this mean free path is the average distance of a gas molecule between collisions. So meaning, before siya mabunggo sa isa ka molecule as it spreads to an, an empty space or to space, this is its average distance covered. So that's the mean free path. The average distance covered by a gas molecule between it collides with another. At sea level, this is the mean free path. Take note of this class, my goodness. Let me ask, paano nina determine sa mga scientists, Ms. Man? No? The mean free path is about 6 times 10 raised to negative 6. That's a million of a centimeter. My goodness, nakagiho pa na siya. 6 times 10 raised to negative 6 centimeters. That's the mean free path. So meaning, class damo-damo, nabungguan ay before ang gas maka, let's say, makatransfer to another side of a particular open space. Because this is its mean free uh, average mean free path before it collides with another. So, gamay gamay, so smaller than hair like thing, it will collide with another gas molecule. Oh my, so take note of that. That's the mean free path at sea level. 
okay, at a standard condition of 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, let me check last time. Huh? Let me check. Uh, we're on slide 52.76. Let me just check how many do I have here. To... I'll just finish until this one. So four more slides, that's that way we will be discussing next meeting real gases, okay? Four naman lang or five slides then. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven lucky slides, then we end because we'll be talking about real behavior or real gases, okay? Okay, let me see. Miss the Google said the lighter gas is used faster. Labto. Google said lighter gas is used faster. Diffusion rate. Let me go back. Nagsala ako na ano? This is our equation. R1 is our oxygen. 32. R2 is our hydrogen. Which is 2. Ay, suli. Class butang ko. Ay, sorry. Sorry. Thank you, Mark. O siya man nag-correct sa ESF. Baka na, may did. This is M2 class. This is M1. By may gabugtaw. Pada ba si nagatululong na kawudatanan? Yung wala niyo kung gin-correct. Your M2, this M2 is this 2. Suli ang pagbutang ko. So, you have 2 here. And this is 32. Ah, suli ako on substitute. So this is 1 over 16. So the, the lady and the heart people was correct all the time. So this is, here din at siya So 1 over, sorry, 1 over 16. Even if you don't Google it actually, thank you still, John, you will still know. So it's the square root of 1 over 16. What's the square root of 1 over 16? One-fourth, means. One-fourth, square root of one-fourth, 0 0.25, 0 0.05. 25, no. Oh, 0.25, so square root, yeah. Square root, some 0 0.25, 0 0.5. I square root, no, not miss. Square root, no, not miss. This is one-fourth. One-fourth is 0.25, right? One, ay, okay, 1 over 16. Kila ang 1 over 16. The square root of 1 over 16, how much is that? This is 1 over 16, right? So square root yes. of 1, oh, so square root of 1 over 16 niya, pila to? 0 0.25. 0 0.25. Ah, square root na gibni. Yes, miss. So then, ang ging Google ni John Chakto. 0.25 R2. So the lighter gas, R1, the lighter, R1 is our heavier gas. In this case, that's oxygen. So your heavier gas will have only one-fourth of the effusion rate of the lighter gas. So the ladies got it right. Okay, si Mark, nagsala. Again, correct naman niya, Seth. Kayo, nagsala akong substitute. So, this should be M2. So, ang M2, tariyo, 2. Okay, nasulit pag butang ko, 32. Butang ko, dire, dire ang 2. Okay? So, that's it. So, either which way, you can still justify your answer. Whether it's wrong or right. So, Miss Alice can correct it because of the wrong substitution. Okay, so this should be 2 over 32. Thank you for that, Jan. So where was I? We go back to our slide. And we'll finish the last seven. Anyway, these are just but postulates. Okay, let me check last time. Okay, so we're here now. Seven more slides on postulates. Okay, 
then we'll go to real behavior. So more on the KMT, at a given temperature, gas molecules have an average speed. So some gas molecules move faster than average, some move, move slower than average. A distribution function is used to describe the range of these speeds in which our molecules of the gas will move. This is the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution of speeds used for gas samples. So if you would be asked what actually quantifies the distribution of this varied movement of molecules of a gas because there are some which would go faster, the other would move slower. It is the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Okay? That will uh, quantify the distribution of the range of speeds of these gas particles. As temperature increases, we know that average speed increases. As temperature increases, the fraction of molecules moving at a higher speed also increases. We know this because as temperature is increased, our gases even move faster. Now, so this is the distribution of speeds for like only, this is only true for carbon dioxide gas at three different temperatures, just to illustrate that when temperature is high, you will have this molecular speed, the range of the molecular speed of your CO2 gas. So at 300, your uh, CO2 gas will have only a maximum molecular speed of, though this one would be very small already in terms of fraction, but it can reach as much as 1,000 or even before that value. But if the temperature is 1,000, it could even reach as much as greater than 1,500 already meters per second. So this uh, justifies this particular statement as temperature increases, the fraction of molecules moving at the higher speeds increases. Now for a fixed temperature, as a gas or as gases molecular weight increases, the average speed of the gas molecule decreases. So we know this a while ago, that the higher the molar mass of our gas, the lesser it's it is its root mean square speed. So meaning it could move slower. So we, we speak of that particular scenario when we are fixing the temperature. So if we keep temperature constant, a heavier gas would move slower than a lighter gas. Meaning is subject mo silang aduas at the same temperature dapat. Okay, so this is the distribution of molecular speeds of four gases at the same temperature of 300. I think I've shown this to you a while ago already. So the lighter one, helium, will tend to have a greater amount of speed, reaching up to 2005 even before it dies down there, while the heavier ones will only can reach as much as 1,000. Now, the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution where N of V is the number of molecules moving with speed V. Now, maawala ako na butang ang ako na formula with class ha. So, most gas molecules move at most the probable speed. Let me check if I have placed the formula here, class. It's a formula that will allow you to determine the number of molecules moving with speed V. So that's your uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. So the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution can be described in terms of average speed, and it's in here. The average speed is 1.128 times the V sub mp. Average speed is 1.128 times the speed at mp. What is that mp? That's the mean free path, I think. Uh, speed. So I will continue next meeting with this before I go to real gases and the kinetic theory because you have there, you have here a representation of the V and P. Okay, so this is average speed and this is V with the M P. As promised, we will end before we reach real gases already. 
topic on real behavior. Anyway, this set of slides class will end at slide 76. So 60, so 16 more, but they are just more on concepts. So this is, this is, there aren't much of computations here and further applications of the concepts of Gasset towards the end. Okay, I will stop sharing now. And you can ask me questions if you're still there. If you're still there, class. Sige, miss, makita ang ano, miss. Video, ah, miss. Video recording. Ang video recording. Bago ni siya kabay, so inog-upload ko pa ni siya. Kaya ang sang last, as I mentioned, i-pause ko na lang ha.